Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. It is Friday, the 16th of June, 2023. And on today's update, yes, despite the El Nino, the Atlantic is getting started early, it seems. We've got this system out here. Very soon, probably going to be designated as Invest Area 92L. Remember, those Invest Areas are 90 through 99, and the L is for Atlantic. They're actually technically AL and then the number, but whatever, we just shorten it. Because we're lazy, I guess. So, yeah, 92L uh, soon will be a thing, as they say. And we'll get a lot more information on it with tracking and models and uh, satellite floaters and that kind of thing. Because we do have something out in the deep tropics. Very, very unusual to see this in June of any season. But to have an El Nino going on in the Pacific, and we are now, according to the Climate Prediction Center, in the very beginnings of an El Nino, to have this happening is very, very unusual, but it is not surprising, especially to you all, right? Because you've been following my updates, you've been watching things, and we've been speculating and wondering what's going to happen with all of that anomalously warm water in the Atlantic. A couple of days ago in my update, I said, you know, it's there. We'll have to see if it amounts to anything. And as if right on cue, apparently it will. So let's take a look at what we know and even a little bit about what we don't know. That's okay, too. First of all, National Hurricane Center homepage is showing up now on the 48-hour tropical weather outlook, 10% chance over the next two days. Not much is going to happen with our system out here. It's going to have to get out farther away from Africa into the Atlantic, where it will develop more thunderstorms and, and take advantage of a very favorable environment. And it looks likely, at least in the computer model guidance, that this will go on to develop. We'll examine that more in just a moment. The seven-day, got to get used to saying that, the seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook, 50% chance of development in this orange area is the region where it should do so. Yes, there should be some concern for folks here in the islands. Not a lot because, A, it hasn't developed yet, and, B, it is several days away and a lot can happen. But I'll add C, that you should at least be paying attention. And most of you do down there. You're pretty hurricane savvy. And if something's coming your way, especially early on, you need to be watching it. Now, one thing they could really use in the islands is a respite from the heat and the dryness. So if it could come through as a decent tropical wave, which it looks like that won't happen if it were to come through, it's probably going to be developed, unfortunately. So you'd have some wind and other impacts. But they could definitely use the rain there just as long as it's not too much. So we're going to be watching this closely, obviously. A lot of people are going to be talking about it over social media and elsewhere, experts and non-experts alike, and we'll just have to see how this evolves. It is very, very unusual. I want to underscore that but not make too much of it until it really gets going. And there are some indications that this can end up being one of, if not the strongest system, to ever come out of the main development region in the month of June. It could be. We're early. We'll have to see. Just some of those things are on the table now looking at the guidance. All right. This is a big part of the culprit here. The ridiculous, anomalously warm water temperatures in the Atlantic. Anomaly. A departure from something. And in this case, the departure from the 30-year average of, of ocean temperatures. That is a classic AMO look. If I had Dr. Klotzbach... And if I had Bill Gray, if I could resurrect him, not joking, seriously, if we had doc, uh, Dr. Bill Gray and Dr. Klotzbach and any of the other of the other pioneers that have, have studied the AMO, they would say, say, look, this right here, that horseshoe shape of the very warm anomalies there in the Atlantic is an absolute correlation, telltale sign of a very busy Atlantic hurricane season. But, there is a but, we've got the El Nino here. But this is not a strong El Nino by any means. We're just barely into El Nino um, threshold, okay? So now every day that that El Nino does not strengthen more is going to matter because that buys more time into the future for the Atlantic to dominate, for rising air to set up over the Atlantic, for it to be moist, sheer, very low, and instability where it needs to be to get things to develop. And it could be a very, very busy season, contrary to what we would usually see during an El Nino. We're not there yet, so we have to be careful 
I have to be careful as the messenger here not to overdo this, but not only do we have this system, but hints of other systems as well. We'll look at that too. Interesting stats here. I like to cite people who are right on the level. You know what I mean? They're not hyping and they're not downplaying. That's what we want to see. Helpful information. Michael Lowry, less than 1% of all tropical storms and hurricanes that have formed in the main development region. Get used to that three-letter, not an acronym, but an abbreviation, MDR, since records began in 1851, have done so in June. Only 1%. By next week, however, odds favor a leap over this historical hurdle. I'll put a link to the Substack post for you in today's description of the video. All right? Another one here from the very talented Tomer Berg. NHC now up the probability, of course, 50%. The main development region, the MDR, there it is again, is typically hostile to tropical cyclones in June. Of course it is, but the environment is unusually favorable with unusually warm sea surface temperatures, abundant moisture, that's huge, and low shear. That's, that's the three main things. And I talked about this the other day when I went over some Hurricane 101 kind of stuff. What are the four main things that you need? And the fourth ingredient was a pre-existing disturbance, something to kick it all off. And we have that with the African Easterly Wave, the AEW, the Tropical Wave. That's combining with all these other favorable parameters. And we're probably going to get a tropical depression and maybe even a tropical storm. Brett would be the name, by the way, as this goes on to try to continue to develop. Here's what it looks like on the satellite, courtesy of weathernerds.org. And you can see it's very um, disorganized right now. But it's June 16th. And we are looking off the coast of Africa. Very, very rare indeed to be doing this. But that's the packet of energy. That's the, the tropical wave in the easterlies here. A little bump. And the air is converging. It's starting to come together. The pressures are going to fall. This is your intertropical convergent zone. This will kind of wind up with this and take advantage of that moisture down in the ITCZ. And it could be off to the races steadily over the coming days. It's going to be really fascinating to watch. There it is on the vorticity signature coming now off of Africa. Watch as this consolidates and becomes more round in nature over the coming days. It'll also get into the Atlantic, well, the central Atlantic side of things, and we'll slide over this product from University of Wisconsin, by the way. We'll look at it from a different perspective um, in a couple of days once it moves into the uh, central and eastern tropical Atlantic out of this area near the Cabo Verde Islands. All right, moisture. I talked about that. Precipitable water. Yeah, plenty of it. Also a very rich intertropical convergent zone. This is pretty dry air up and through here, but it looks like this is going to come on across with a very favorable environment. There's a phenomenon called a convectively coupled Kelvin wave. Don't have time to get into the weeds of what that is right now. But think of it as a shot of Red Bull, okay? It's a temporary small window of opportunity of much more favorable conditions uh, in the atmosphere that kind of passes through only a few days in time span versus the Madden-Julian oscillation, which is a longer time period of favorable conditions for any part of the globe. And in the Atlantic, these CCKWs can kind of move through and they set off, kind of get things started with some of these tropical waves that give them that extra boost, hence the Red Bull analogy. And there is one such a, a CCKW, a convectively coupled Kelvin wave, moving through the Atlantic. You can't see it. It's not something you can grab out of the air, but you see its results. And you can see it on different charts that, again, that's a whole other lesson, all right? But this does have favorable conditions ahead of it. And look at that. All oh, those colors in there, the purples, yes, this is not one of those seasons with a dry MDR where instability and moisture are lacking. And just to kind of zoom in a little bit on that anomaly map, look at all of the ridiculously warm water relative to average. Relative to average is very important. This is several degrees Celsius warmer than it should be. That being said, and we'll pull up a sea surface temperature map tomorrow to show you the actual temperatures. Got to leave some stuff for each day. 
Um, these are the anomalies. We'll look at actual temperatures tomorrow. They may be anomalies warmer than something, but they are already warm enough. It's like September out there. That might be a little bit of a stretch, maybe late August, and it's only June. So the Atlantic thinks that it's peak hurricane season time in terms of how favorable things are, and we're still almost two months from that normally happening. That's incredible. It really is. All right, so that's uh, favorable as well. So with all that being said, what do the models show? Again, this is that 850 millibar level of the atmosphere that I like to look at myself. This is the area that we want to watch right here. That's the energy. It doesn't look like much now. This is about 5,000 feet in the atmosphere, so not real good at all for steering. And we're not going to worry about steering just yet. This is still days out there. And we already have camps of people, oh, it's going out to sea. And who knows? Maybe it will. Most do, by the way, or nobody would live at the coast. So just keep that in mind. So watch that area that I highlighted a, a little bit ago. See how it starts to congeal by 72 hours. There it is. It really starts to come together by day three right there. And eh, also of note, a little bit of a turning motion down here. GFS trying to develop something out of that Central American gyre. You never know. Some of these systems can be fairly small and hard to detect by the global models. You don't ignore everything, but you also don't jump on everything and make mountains out of molehills, as they say. But we'll be watching the, the system in the Atlantic there. That's 96 hours, well on its way, south of, obviously, a pretty stout ridge of high pressure. These are almost like contour lines on a topographic map, except this is the atmosphere, a big mountain of air. And it stays south of that until, evidently, and yes, this is starting to show up. We get some troughing over here that breaks the ridge and allows the system to start gaining latitude. This is beyond five days. There's day six, and then finally day seven. If this weakness is, in fact, here a week out, then this would have a pretty easy escape route out to sea. But look, a week out, really? It's impossible to know a week out. We should know that by now. Just like it would be impossible to know if it was absolutely going to just plow through the islands towards Florida or something. It would not be wise to put your bets on one system or one outcome over another at this very early time frame. A lot can happen in a week. And most of the time, early on, we see these systems try to get handed off into the westerlies, as they say. It's just kind of how the models do. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. That's why I'm going to watch it. That's why this is, well, one of the reasons why this is so interesting. Um, and this is the European about six hours uh, before that last one. The last one, this is just to get it straight. This is the 6Z GFS. This is the 0Z Euro. The 6Z Euro only goes out to 90 hours or something. So anywhere they're about six hours apart, but very similar in their evolutions. There's the Euro. And just to make sure you know what you're looking at right down here, the Euro definitely takes off with this system, starts to turn it just a little bit later because it too has that weakness right there. And yes, this is the lower part of the atmosphere, but believe me, it's there throughout all levels. And now we're out, I mean, I went beyond 168 hours. Oops. I do want to try to keep things consistent. Hurricane Center does seven-day tropical weather outlooks. They still do five-day forecasts when there's a, um, a system on the map, so to speak. We can look out at, at a week when things are in their genesis. That's fine. You know, beyond a week, pff, come on. Even a week's time is hard to uh, swallow sometimes in terms of what could happen. So, yeah. What else can I tell you? I mean, it's early June. we got to watch this. You know the drill, except not in early June, like or mid-June, sorry. Early in the season is what I should say. Um, and we'll see. All right? No, you know, nothing to panic about just yet. I do think it could be uh, certainly a warning shot. And, yes, there are other systems that the models, I mean, look, even at 168 hours, there's another wave showing up in the modeling there. A little kind of an impulse here already over Louisiana the Atlantic trying to produce. It's trying to produce. That's the, the bottom line here. And again, it's early season and only mid-June. All right, paper tracking map pitch time for you. 
Got a few orders yesterday. I will be shipping those out to you today for those of you that grabbed yours. Um, it is. It's a nice size poster map. No, it's not laminated. A couple people asked about that over email, but you can laminate it. It's kind of like on a, um, I guess it's kind of glossy, you know, it's not matte. I do know that. Um, and uh, it's big. It's a poster size. What is it? 18 by 24 inches, I think it is. I've produced them for so long I forgot, but it's it's big. And you, I roll them up and put them in a tube and mail it to you. And so you can take it and get it, get it laminated if you want to. But it's uh, best to use a Sharpie. Sharpies work great. A black Sharpie or whatever, or different colors. If you can find a box of Sharpies that has like yeah, 16 different colors, maybe we'll have 16 different storms this year. Or you can use push pins or whatever. But you can get one at the link that I'll put in the video. It's hurricanetrack.com slash track map if you want to get one of these for yourself. All right? All right. Let's get this done and sign out, shall we? Yes, we shall. So we'll watch this closely. Obviously, I'll be doing another video update for you tomorrow. Uh, on the road, still a little bit visiting family, um, kind of a semi-vacation, semi-work, right? The tropics don't take vacations, obviously. So I'll be on top of it for you. Don't forget, too, we're on Twitter and Facebook and, of course, YouTube. All of it's Hurricane Track. Follow, like, share. You know the drill everybody says on social media these days. And again, a sincere thank you for watching these videos and sharing them with your friends, family, and colleagues. It's not about vanity, but hey, I want to be famous. I like to be able to spread what I know, and I appreciate you tuning in. I really do. So from the heart, I appreciate it. You guys have a good rest of your Friday. And as we head into the weekend, I, of course, will keep you updated as this system goes on and does whatever it's going to do. I am Mark Sutter of Hurricane Track. I'll talk to you again sometime tomorrow.